Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today we are doing my houseplant favorites for the month of September. And I have some really good ones this month. I feel like my plants just went through their last big growth spurt for the year. It's still been so nice and warm and sunny, which has been really great. And I've just really been appreciating it because I know that within the next month, it's going to get a lot cooler, a lot darker, and the speed of their growth is really gonna slow down so we're just soaking it in while it's lasting but yeah okay um, I do have a sponsor for today's favorites video which is very exciting thank you so much to Popsa for sponsoring today's video as some of you know I had a really tough summer this year and even though it was really hard I also had a lot of really great moments I did a lot of things I started a garden for the first time and I don't want how much I struggled to be the focus in my memory like I don't want that to overshadow how many great times I had this is why I was so excited to use Popsa. So Popsa is an app where you can really quickly and easily create your own photo book. So this is the photo book that I made. I don't know how well you can tell on camera, but this is like a cute light green. I love it so much. And the photo on the front is my first sunflower that I grew unfurling, like opening up. So precious. So I went through my camera roll on my phone and I chose all of my favorite memories from the spring to the end of August. <laughs> the first one, this was Olive's ninth birthday. Look at her with her little birthday platter. My mom and I. It's really cool because you can completely customize it. Like you can have the, pic the picture layout however you'd like it. You can completely customize colors, the cover. Um, you can have little like captions on the pages. These are all just photos that I took on my iPhone too. So I wasn't sure how the quality was gonna turn out but I was pleasantly surprised when this arrived to like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Looked like she was winking in this photo. That was my mom all sinking on her kayak. And our first time paddle boarding, me and Olive. <laughs> My besties and I. This honestly just makes me so happy. Some of the things that I grew in my garden. Of course, I had to put some of those photos in there. This photo book honestly brings me so much joy and I'm someone who's always thinking like, I need to print out photos, but I never get around to it. It's too, too much of a hassle. So I love just how easy it was to put this together. Such a great idea for a gift too. Speaking of gifts, mine came in this nice gift box as well. So yeah, it's perfect. Boop. I'm so grateful to have those memories printed and I'm already like planning out more photo books that I wanna create with Popsa. If you'd like to create your own photo book, click the link down in the description below to download the Popsa app. You can use my code WILDFERN for 30% off for a limited time. Thank you so much to Popsa for sponsoring this portion of the video. I truly appreciate it. Now let's hop into the plants. Okay, I honestly feel like the plants I have to show you are really good this month. I don't even know where to start. Okay, let's just start here. This is my philodendron SP Silver. Y'all know her. She's one of my faves. And um, I showed you guys recently, uh, it was in my like big leaves video or something called something like that. But I showed you this leaf that she had put out, which is massive. I mean, I'm still like blown away by this leaf. Uh, it's beautiful, perfect. But she is now working on another one. If you would look over here, do you see that? Oh, it looks like it's gonna be massive too. Like, look at this, even furled up, it looks massive. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait until this thing opens. I'm telling y'all, this is one of the easiest philodendrons in my collection. If you've been wanting one, but you're apprehensive about the care, so easy, seriously. This just grows in my bedroom. It gets ambient lighting. I don't do anything special. Yes, it has a moss pole, so I would say, um, if yours is climbing, because some of these SP Silver slash SP Columbia's are crawlers, mine is climbing. If yours is climbing, I would suggest giving it a pull. Mine seems to really like that, and it's obviously sizing up quite a bit. But yeah, other than that, honestly, it's just been such a breeze. I don't even think I've lost a leaf since I got this plant. Yeah, basically the new leaf is the reason that it is on my favorites list. I wasn't gonna put it in this video. I was gonna save it for my update video to show y'all, but I just had to show it off. What I, For some reason, I, I find it satisfying like when they're all ro rolled up, but they're like massive. It just looks so cool. 
So by the time we do my um, updates video for, uh, gosh, I guess October, uh, I'll be able to show you guys what it looks like unfurled, hopefully. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for all of the planty updates. Okay, let's put her back. Okay, next, I'm just gonna grab this one. This is my string silver dollar vine. <laughs> I always want to call it string of coins. <laughs> Someone told me that that actually can be another name for it, so maybe I should just roll with that. But silver dollar vine is, I think, what it's most commonly known as and what I know it as or I'm trying to know it as. I can put like the botanical name on the screen but I, I don't think I figured out how to pronounce that one yet. Anyways, I'm obsessed with this plant right now. As you can see, I have indeed potted it into terracotta. I have a confession. I, I wanted to put this plant in my favorites video because this is one of my top favorite plants right now and it was still in its plastic nursery pot and I had told y'all like weeks ago, I was like, I'm gonna repot this plant this week and then I never got around to it. So right before I sat down to film this video, I quickly <laughs> repotted it. So it literally just got transferred into terracotta. But how good does it look? Like, oh my goodness, this silvery blue foliage with the terracotta. Oh, I knew it was gonna look amazing and it freaking does. This is all new growth here. Uh, you can see that it's like lighter, so the new growth comes in light green and it's kind of like flimsy feeling. And then as it gets older, like over time, it hardens off to this like really dark silvery green um, and they get like really thick and succulent. I love these leaves so much. This plant is just so unique. If you like round leaves like me, like I love Hoya obovada. That was another one that I was actually debating putting in this video, but I think I'll save it for my updates video. It's growing so much, um, but I love round leaves. So this is one, if you are like me, then I would say that this is one that you should check out. Super easy going. This lives in a self-facing window. I, re I treat it like a succulent, honestly. Like I let it dry out quite a bit and it's never complained or anything. It's still been growing throughout the whole summer. I don't know what, if these are like roots or what, these little stringy things hanging down. Very interesting. If anybody knows, leave a comment. They don't really look like roots, but they could be. Anyways, I got this plant from Plant Haven Toronto if you are looking for one. Um, I'm not sure if they have them stocked right now, but um, they do ship Canada wide and to the US now. So check it out if you're interested. I can't wait until this gets even bigger. Oh my goodness. Although I probably can wait because so many of my plants are getting massive right now. Um, Hillary came over the other day and she hadn't been to my house for a while and she walked in and she's like, oh my God, it looks like there's way more plants. And then she's like, or, or they've just grown. I was like, yeah, they've grown a ton and it's really just like encroaching. Okay, next I have to give a moment for my Philodendron Glorious. So, oh my goodness. Yeah, she's grown a ton also. Um, so I want to talk about this plant because I have been showcasing my philodendron splendid so much the past couple of months, which is well deserved. That plant is just growing incredibly. I actually extended the moss pole yesterday. Um, it's very tall now. I think it's the the tallest, the biggest moss pole I've ever done as like a D DIY. Uh, it's holding up so far. It hasn't like toppled over yet, so that's good. Um, but anyways, uh, back to my philodendron glorious here. I just felt like this plant deserved some love too because it has been growing so well over the summer and I have not been the best plant parent to her. I have let her dry out too much. I put her too close to a grow light. I've just, I feel like she would be bigger if I had put more time and energy into caring for her but regardless of all that she has still just been doing really well and she's really getting to the point where she's filling out she's starting to size up she's attaching to the moss pole she's growing a lot like pretty much all of the vines have new leaves coming out you can see new leaf right there and then all of these ones you can see like little little i don't know how well you can see actually on the camera but there's like little new leaves trying to poke out of, of all these vines. Um, I underwatered her and this one actually got ripped. It was trying to unfurl and I think it got too dehydrated. So that sucks. But yeah, I think that this is the biggest leaf so far and it's so pretty. I think if I can 
focus more on growing this well. I'm gonna love it just as much as the Splendid because it has all of the features that I love um, in a philodendron and all the features pretty much the same. It's, it's quite similar to the Splendid in my brain, especially when they're younger like this. Not that I want to like compare them, but, kind of, but in my brain, I kind of like pair them together. Um, but yeah, they're both like dark and velvety. They're easy going and just really good growers. So yeah, I just had to show her off now that she's actually like really getting going and I'm going to try my best to start caring for her better because she really deserves that and I do want to see this plant reach its, you know, its fullest potential um, growing in my home. So yeah, hopefully we'll see more of her over the winter and she'll be thriving and doing really well. But yeah, incredible plant, philodendron glorious. Okay, so I have another little cutie to show you here. I'm actually just realizing that this came from Plant Haven Toronto as well in the same order that the Silver Dollar Vine came to me in. Um, and this plant, I just had to talk about this in this video because I've been appreciating it honestly all summer, so she deserves her moment. This is my variegated vanilla orchid, and I just think that this is the cutest thing ever. I love this whole little setup that's going on here the i love how she's climbing the moss plank um i love the dragonfly clip like this plant just looks really ethereal and dainty and it just reminds me of like a little fairy garden or something like it's just so uh like delicate looking even though it looks delicate though it's quite a hardy plant I don't know if y'all watched my video where I was repotting this. I think I did like a whole dedicated video to that actually. And I snapped this plant right here actually, you can see. I snapped it when it was, it was still very small. I had just gotten it. So I had two pieces, obviously. So this was like the main one that's growing up. And then I had to put the part that snapped off just into the moss down here. And I wasn't really sure if it was gonna root. I had never grown this plant before. I didn't really know anything about it. Didn't even know like how to propagate it, but I just stuck it in the moss and hope for the best. And it is growing. This is a new leaf down there. So I'm gonna have two vines coming up from this soon, which is really exciting. After I got this plant, I started doing some more research into vanilla orchids and I just think that they're so fascinating. And if you look on YouTube, like if you just put in like vanilla orchid, you can find some videos of people with really massive ones like vining around their whole houses or people growing them like outside in the tropics and then they get vanilla beans from them. It's just like the coolest thing ever. It's just so neat that the vanilla bean actually comes from like the vanilla orchid not that that would ever be able to happen in my care but it's just cool to think that you know like in the wild that's a thing anyways i feel like i don't often feature these kind of like smaller plants um when really they are deserving of just as much love as like some of my bigger ones these ones are a little bit more like show stopping but these ones if you pay attention you can appreciate them so much and i really do so yeah, that is it for my vanilla orchid. Okay, we have another big leaf. Uh, this is actually quite exciting, which is why I had to document it in this video. So as you can see, this is my Anthurium forgetii. And this is the newest leaf on my Anthurium forgetii. Let me very gently move it out. Okay, so. This was the last leaf it gave me, which is massive also, and I've shown that one before. But the reason that I'm so excited to show you this one, and it's still expanding and still hardening off, so I don't know how big it's gonna get, but um, this is very exciting because I have been trying pretty much the whole, ever since I took this plant out of my cabinet like a year ago, I have had the goal of getting a nice leaf to grow because they all come out ripped or, turn crispy right away um yeah they pretty much always come out ripped or crispy because i can be really inconsistent with watering 
And this one, as you can see, is not ripped. It looks like so good. It's not perfect. It does have some very mild damage like to the edges, but honestly, this is like pretty freaking close to perfect. This looks so good. I'm so proud of this, you guys. I have been on top of my watering. I just like, mm, I've really been trying and it's paying off. So yeah, we just had to document this moment. I don't know how long it will last. Perhaps this will start crisping in a couple of weeks. I really hope not. Uh, I had always heard like, oh, Anthurium forgetii is such an easy Anthurium to start with or to like grow in room humidity. But then I, I can't remember what I was watching or listening to the other day, but somebody was talking about how much they struggle with Anthurium forgetii and that they knew it as like a difficult Anthurium to grow nice leaves and to not, you know, have it get crispy. Um, and I just hadn't really heard, I usually hear the opposite. So it was kind of like reaffirming to, to hear somebody um, say that they struggle with it in room humidity as well. You know, it just made me feel a little bit better. Like, okay, I'm not, I'm not the only one that can't like grow this plant perfectly <laughs> and beautifully. I had no problems with it in my IKEA cabinet, but obviously there's no way it can fit in there anymore. I'm kind of surprised at how large the leaves, the leaves, the leaves are growing on this guy because this doesn't get very much light. It gets like indirect like medium light I would say and it's still like you know kind of grows like a beast so that's pretty cool but yeah I just had to share this monumental moment with you all okay I think I'm gonna talk about this guy next I was just uh posting about this plant on my Instagram earlier today actually uh so this is my monstera why is it just why am I blanking Hello, subpanata. This is my Monstera subpanata. Um, and as you can see, it has these beautiful like frond palm like um, kind of leaves, kind of like a similar vibe to the Philodendron tortum, but obviously like a bit different. So I have had this Monstera for actually pretty much exactly a year now. I think I got it last September. Um, and it was just like this, these small little leaves down here. I feel like it took a while to establish, but now it's just taking off, like honestly taking off a little too fast because I'm trying to cut this thing up. And I just noticed that it actually is like preparing to put out a new leaf again already. And it just put this one out. So I need to get on it. Look how much it's grown off of the moss pole. Um, the reason I haven't cut it though is because I've been wanting to show it off in this video. I've been waiting to film this video. Um, so I'll probably be cutting this like, within the next few days or maybe, yeah, within the next few days, I'll probably cut this up. Um, but the reason I'm wanting to cut it is just because I want to try just growing this along like a bamboo stake, kind of similar to how I used to have my Rapidophora tetrasperma. I feel like it's a plant that's just going to look really cool, just like up a thin stake rather than on this big moss pole. And I'm really trying to reserve my moss poles for plants that I really feel like need them or are going to benefit from them or whatever uh, so when there's a plant that i feel like i can get away with growing it another way then i'm going to explore that route just because i have a lot of moss poles y'all that's no secret and i do have to spend a lot of time maintaining them you know watering them every couple days extending them um it gets to be a lot when you have like 20 of them you know so uh so i really am just trying to like explore other ways to grow my plants too Anyways, either way, I'm really excited because I'm going to be propagating this plant, which I've never done before, and I don't know anything. I've never... I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about this plant, so I haven't really heard much about propagating them or, like, if they're easy to propagate. Uh, hopefully they are. Um, I guess I'm just going to water propagate. I'm going to cut the whole thing up and water propagate and then start a new plant growing up a bamboo stake. So... That'll be a fun project for the next couple of months and I can, you know, keep you guys updated on how that's going. But I just think that this is such like a cool jungly, jungle vibes kind of plant, um, especially the way like it's just growing so crazy and I just really love that about it. So I am kind of sad to cut it up, but I'm also just excited for um, what's going to happen. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful leaves on this. Uh, it's been really easy care for me, honestly. The only thing that I, the only like hard lesson that I learned with this plant is to not have it too close to a grow light. I have this like 
on the floor now so it's like pretty far from the grow light above it but this is what happened when I put it too close to a grow light this one was hit the worst I think yeah so the leaves got scorched within a couple of days um, so just keep that in mind if you are gonna grow this plant other than that it's been such a breeze and yeah I love it so much Okay, whew, I think that we are on to the last one now. And the last one is none other than my beautiful Silver Glory String of Hearts. This thing has grown so much this summer, you guys. Like, I can't believe how big of a plant I have of this now. I should stand up and show y'all how long she is. <laughs> I don't think she, the whole thing is in the frame, but as you can see she is very long very beautiful i think that the silver glory is my favorite of all the string of hearts varieties i did just pot up two tiny strands of my variegated string of hearts my whole my whole my variegated string of hearts just like croaked this year for i don't even know why just randomly croaked i was able to save these two tiny strands so we'll see if those start growing i hope that they do because I'm really into String of Hearts at the moment um, and I found a creator, her name is Liz. Uh, I'll put her channel name and I can link her channel and her Insta down below too if you wanna check her out. But her variegated String of Hearts, she has a ton of them and she just grows them out incredibly and shares like care tips. And yeah, I'm honestly just like drooling over all of her reels and posts. So if you're looking for string of hearts like inspo or information check out her um youtube or insta but yeah for me just the silver glory my regular one has grown really well also this summer it's honestly as long as my whole mills botal ikea cabinet is going down the side and this one is almost as tall too like she is long long and she has some like really big beautiful hearts too which is what i love if you can see like i love these big ones i am going to be making a care video soon um but the biggest tip that i can give regarding growing them is to not let them go too long without water when I first got String of Hearts years ago, it was always so emphasized in like all the videos and everything I could find to not overwater them and wait until they're like bone dry. People honestly were are acting like these are freaking cactus, but no, you I water these the same as my tropicals. You're not gonna get big hearts if you're under watering these. So as soon as it's dry, I like to water them. But yeah, this is her. And I guess that is my last plant for this video. Ooh. Okay, let's put her back, the poor thing. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this favorites video. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if you are interested in ordering your own Popsa photo book, make sure you click the link down in my description box. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.